Stack West on a Monday makes for a fun day. Stack West on any day makes that day fun. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StackQuest. Today we're going to talk about doing multidimensional scaling, MDS, and principal coordinate analysis, PCOA, in R. If you don't already know, MDS, or classical or metric MDS, is the exact same thing as PCOA. One last thing before we move on. The code that I use in this StackQuest is available on the StackQuest website, and the link to that code is in the description below. First, we load in ggplot2 since we'll need it later to draw fancy looking graphs. Now we generate some fake data. This is exactly the same as the data we used in the PCA and R stack quest, so I'm going to breeze through this pretty quickly. If you need more details, check out that stack quest. The data will consist of a matrix with 10 columns corresponding to 10 samples and 100 rows corresponding to measurements from 100 genes. The first five columns will be WT, or wild type samples, and the last five columns will be KO, or knockout samples. The genes will have really creative names like Gene 1 and Gene 2. This is where we generate the fake data, and the head function shows us the first six rows, or genes, for all 10 samples. Now, just for comparison, we'll do PCA on the data set. I'm going to breeze through these steps since we went over them already in the PCA and R stat quest. Now we create a PCA plot using ggplot. Note, we covered this command in the PCA and R stat quest, so check that out if this looks totally crazy. Bam! The wild type samples are on the left side of the graph, and the knockout samples are on the right side. The x axis, PC1, for the first principal component, accounts for 91% of the variation in the data. And the y-axis, for PC2, or principal component 2, only accounts for 2.7% of the variation in the data. This means that most of the differences were between the wild type and the knockout samples. Now let's create an MDS, or PCOA, plot to compare to this one. Step 1 create a distance matrix. We do this with the dist function. Just like with PCA, we transpose the matrix so the samples are rows. We also center and scale the measurements for each gene, which are now the columns. Lastly, we tell the dist function that we want to create the matrix using the Euclidean distance metric. Note, the dist function has six different distance metrics to choose from. Step 2. Perform multi-dimensional scaling on the distance matrix using the CMD scale function. CMD scale stands for Classical Multi-Dimensional Scaling. We tell CMD scale that we want it to return the eigenvalues. We use these to calculate how much variation in the distance matrix each axis in the final MDS plot accounts for. We can also get CMD scale to return the doubly centered, i.e. both rows and columns are centered, version of the matrix. This is useful if you want to demonstrate how to do MDS using the Eigen function instead of the CMD scale function. Originally, I thought I was going to demonstrate how to use the Eigen function to do multidimensional scaling, but in the end, I really wanted to keep this practical, and if you're going to do MDS, you're going to use the CMD scale function. Step 3. Calculate the amount of variation each axis in the MDS plot accounts for using the eigenvalues. Step 4. Format the data for ggplot. Lastly, Call ggplot to make a fancy graph. Just like in the PCA graph, the wild type samples are on the left side of the graph, and the knockout samples are on the right side. And just like in the PCA graph, the x-axis accounts for 91% of the variation in the data. 
and the y-axis only accounts for 2.7% of the variation in the data. Actually, the PCA graph and the MDS graph don't just look similar, they are exactly the same. This is because we use the Euclidean metric to calculate the distance matrix. Now let's see what happens when we use a different metric to calculate the distance matrix. Let's use the average of the absolute value of the log fold change. Psst! For all you gene expression folks, this is what edge r does when you call the plot mds function. The first thing we do is calculate the log 2 values of the measurements for each gene. Since the average of absolute values of the log fold change isn't one of the distance metrics built into the dist function, we'll create our own distance matrix by hand. In this step, we're just creating an empty matrix. This is where we fill the matrix with the average of the absolute values of the log fold changes. And here's what that matrix looks like. Because the full matrix would be symmetrical, we only have to calculate the values for the lower triangle. Now we perform multidimensional scaling on our new distance matrix. Here, I'm just converting our homemade matrix into a true distance matrix so that CMD scale knows what it's working with. In other words, a true distance matrix only needs the bottom triangle to be computed and not the whole thing. Everything else is the same. Just like before, we calculate the amount of variation each axis in the MDS plot accounts for using the eigenvalues. And again, just like before, we format the data for ggplot. Lastly, we create the graph using ggplot. Double bam! The two different MDS plots, one using the Euclidean distance and the other using the average of the absolute value of the log fold change, are similar, but not the same. In the new graph, the x-axis accounts for more of the variation, 99.2% versus 91%. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more of them, please subscribe. And if you have any ideas for additional stat quests, we'll put them in the comments below. Alright, until next time, quest on!